When I knew that God called me, I knew by the Spirit of God that I am to take this word and study it. I did not go to Bible school. I had no time to go to Bible school. I wished I had gone to Bible school. But the Lord called me like that and I had to move fast. So I would take this Bible and I began to study it when I did not even understand some of the words in my own Bible. So I got a dictionary and began to see what those words meant. This was 1972. We had just come from Israel in 68. I spoke no English in 68. I did not speak hardly a word of English. So think about how hard it was for me to study the King James when I hardly knew even how to speak English. So I had to take this Bible and I had to see what it meant before I could see what God said. So day after day, all I would do is read this book and read and reread and reread and reread and reread and look at the dictionaries and reread and reread and reread. Now God's word, young people, must fill your life and God will not do that part for you. If you think that God Almighty will do this for you, you're wrong. It's my job and your job to enter into his word. There is no such prayer as fill me with your word. No, no. You take the word and you read the word and God will reveal his word. It's your job to get in. It's his job to reveal his word when you get in. The entrance of thy word, when I enter, Lord, when I myself begin, the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. And surely I was quite simple. I didn't even know what I was reading. But I had to enter, I had to study, I had to learn, I had to sweat, I had to forsake other things so the word of God can get into my life. I had to pay a price. You want God to use you, right? Right. You must pay the price called study. You can't expect God to use you if you don't study. And Timothy said, study to show thyself approved unto God. God will reject you if you're not disciplined. So you must be disciplined. That's what a disciple is. So now, we are the ones who choose to enter. Say, I choose. Now, you can choose to read books, watch videos, watch movies, go, go to ball games and all this. That's your choice. But what will those things give you? Nothing, really. If you watch a movie, you can watch that thing 20 times. What does it do for you? Entertain you. What, what does it add to your life? Real substance, I mean now. What does it give you that's from heaven? If you watch a Christian movie, okay, it's different. If you watch a Bible movie, fine. But there is no substitute for the Word. No substitute for the Bible. So you can watch videos, movies, read books, magazines, do all kinds of play games. At the end, you have to look back and say, what have I gained spiritually? Not what have I gained, whatever. What have I gained for God? If you've gained nothing, you've just wasted your time. Don't let your days be wasted with zeros. Don't let your days be wasted with cheap zeros. Make your day, make your day count for God.
Now, please hear this. Do you know how God chooses people? He looks for those who want to be used and says, him, him, her. He's looking. His eyes are going to and fro. It says, to show himself strong on behalf of those who fear him. You have got to show God, prove to God you're worthy. God doesn't choose you just because your mom and your dad are godly people. God will not choose you just because you're a nice guy, a nice lady, nice girl. No, God doesn't even choose you. Hear this. God doesn't even choose you just because you're a preacher's kid. He will choose you if you show yourself. If you make yourself available. Catherine Kuhlman, a lady that I was touched by her ministry in a powerful way, said one, one thing that grabbed my soul when, when I was younger. I heard her say this. Before God began to use me, I heard her say this. Now listen. She said, God is not looking for golden vessels. He's not looking for silver vessels. He's looking for yielded vessels. And my heart cried, here I am. God is not looking for golden vessels, silver vessels. He's looking for yielded surrendered vessels I was so moved one time when I heard her say I had no talent I had no gifts I had nothing and she looked up and said Jesus if you can use nothing here it is He is not, God is not looking for brilliant people, highly educated people, smart people. He's just looking for people. Anybody who says, here am I, use me, Lord, God says, okay. But you got to understand, he is looking for young people that will make their lives available. If you will say, Lord, here, I, I'm, I'm available, Lord. Fix me, change me, turn me upside down, shake everything out. I don't care what you do to me, just use me. Now, that's what I did. When I heard Catherine Kuhlman say that she gave God a nothing, I said, good. That's what I got. <laughs> Nothing. I looked up and I said to God, I said, Lord, I can't talk. I can't preach. I can't sing. There's nothing I can do, Lord. But if you want me, here it goes. Take me. And God looked down and said, I accept you. That simple. But then, I had to do what is right. I had to take this Bible and learn the Bible. Because I thought, how can God use me if I don't know His Word? I can't just stand, you know, stand and just say nothing. I got to say something. And when I began to preach, I preached what I had learned by myself. Yeah, I could have gone to school. Bible school, whatever. It just didn't happen that way. Now, key number one. Fill your life with the Word and you must give up. Give up everything that means nothing. You cannot feed upon this if you have 20 things at the same time.